Welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing lure making TV. We are starting this video off with a bang. We just refilled the Jetson Eye tank. Finest lure eyes in the world. Just look at this. A lot of these are from our uh, signature series with Jetson Lure Company. Um, so a lot of these eyes are um, from my collection. So this one right here, that's tarpon yellow. This is one of our blended colors. Uh, that's plush green. That's one of mine. That's tarpon yellow. That's also one of mine. And then we have some samples of some new versions, some new pupils that we are going to add to the collection. Look at some of that juiciness. Look at that. Some far out stuff. So lots of exciting things happening. Uh, trying to bring you some awesome eyeballs to enhance your lure creations. Okay, so let's get right into it. This is one of the uh, most looked forward to videos I've ever made. Uh, this project has been in development for probably 11 months. Um, you know, there's just kind of been setbacks here and there. You know, again, this is niche equipment being custom made for a very niche market. This stuff doesn't exist yet. You know, these, uh, these, these ideas have to be carefully put together. Um, you know, it's not just being sourced somewhere else. This is all, you know, a lot of what we do in, in bait making is, is new stuff. Um, so this project, um, when I first kind of was told about it, uh, Kyle mentioned the idea to me. I said, yes, let's run with it. Um, so literally over the last 11 months, we've been kind of going back and forth discussing options. Um, you know, he had the task of actually building it. The more engineering side, I consulted on, well, how big should it be? And here's what the heat needs are. And here are some of the challenges that we need to overcome, or, or, or here are some of the challenges that we face as hand pourers that we want this hot plate to overcome. And uh, through lots, lots of time, conversations, trial and error, and um, I'll go into some more of the trial and error stuff later, but we finally have it, y'all. This is the first ever hand pourers hot plate built for the bait maker, for you, and it completely solves all of the problems that we've all faced for years pouring on a cheap pancake griddle, right? All of the limitations of this are now gone. All right, everybody, there it is. So in a world, a bait making world that is, where we have shooting stars, pneumatic air vice clamps for injection, and what is seemingly bigger and better and more sophisticated pieces of equipment to help us garage bait makers, we finally have a serious tool, piece of equipment for the hand pouring specialists. So this is the first ever hand pourers hot plate. This is a cooking griddle on mega steroids. Um, and let me go over some of the features. First and foremost, one, one of the biggest obstacles that we face as hand pourers is getting even temperatures across the surface, right? To heat up the molds evenly. And we usually face issues with everything not being level because a pancake griddle is, you know, you just set it on your table and it is what it is. So it heats inconsistently, it heats unevenly, it's not level, and they warp. Over time they will warp and then you have to try to straighten them back out. All of that pretty much is now a thing of the past. We have adjustable legs, which uh, I can show those to you uh, in a little more detail. They're threaded and what this allows you to do is set a leveler on top of your plate here and completely level your plate and what that's going to do is allow for for better pouring too many times you'll you'll top off your mold but maybe the plastic kind of groups up down here in the tail and then it slightly overfills the tail or maybe maybe there's a slight angle or arc right to your hot plate maybe it's warped maybe your workbench isn't completely level because most of our workbenches are not completely level and even if they are things change over time 
and they're not going to be anymore. And so a lot of times, what you know, you, you'll pour a mold perfectly, but then you'll still get some overspill. And a lot of that is just from uneven conditions. So this is a quarter inch aluminum plate. It will not warp. It's perfectly straight. And what that allows is for better surfaces, right? Um, for, for better, for better, I guess, con connection of surfaces. I, I'm, I'm struggling here with my words, but this allows the entire bottom surface of the mold to be in perfect contact with it. A warped pancake griddle, right? If it's warped, it, you're maybe only going to get a good connection of surfaces on the ends of the mold. Now the mold sits completely flush to the aluminum and the whole plate heats evenly. A mold that's right there is going to heat to the same temperature at the same rate as a mold in the back or a mold over there. So I uh, actually have a little leveling app on my phone and uh, as you can see, boy, it is very close. What's interesting is if you slide right the plate, depending on just, you know, any, uh, I guess, inconsistencies in your table surface, you slide it one way, it's maybe a little bit more level than, than the other. But uh, what this allows for, of course, is for you to get that even level playing field even on a workbench that does not flatter hand pouring. So let's look at this thing just a little bit closer. Here was the ah, secret sauce, okay. So that is actually a heat blanket, right? That is mounted to the underside of the actual heating surface, okay? So you sort of have this bottom plate here that just kind of boxes in the whole apparatus. This is a very specialized custom made heat blanket and what this allows for oops and what that allowed for was even heating okay this blanket the whole thing is a heating element and so what that allowed allowed us to do was get the same heat over here that we have over here that we have over here everywhere that's up under this where where that heating blanket is okay the whole surface is one big giant heating element. So, so you don't have heating elements kind of doing a pattern or, or uh, like the pancake griddles where they go around the edge. Now the whole plate is the same heating element. And uh, this took a long time to, to get right. It took a long time to get the heat blankets. They're very expensive. They're a large part of the cost of one of these. Um, but that right there was the secret sauce, you know, trying other things, you know, a thicker plate with, with drilled holes for, for traditional heating elements. That was actually going to not only be more expensive, but it was going to be a lot more difficult. And we still were not getting that even heat distribution. That was the breakthrough, was, was, when, was when the idea for the heat blanket was born and we knew that we could get that even heat distribution and just for a little bit of contrast here's the underside of probably the griddle that i've poured on the most and you can see you know these electrical heating elements it just kind of goes around now obviously these are not made for you know uh <laughs> very detailed hand pouring these are made to cook eggs and, and pancakes and uh you know a, a piece of breakfast ham so you know Obviously, these are not designed for what we're doing, but you know, it's crazy that so many people have invested so much money into the art of hand pouring and we're using, you know, $40 pieces of cooking equipment from Walmart. But now we actually have something built by us for us and um, I could not be more excited to demonstrate this thing. Okay, let's turn it on. Kind of go through how to use this bad boy. What's amazing is that it's actually like a learning thermometer. So the more you run this plate, the more it's going to learn how to maintain temperature within just a few degrees. So not only do you actually know, right? Because we, we never really know with those pancake griddles what we're getting it to. You set a pancake griddle to 250 degrees. One part of the mold may be at 100. The other part may be at 300. We really don't know. Um, now you really know. 
And so what anyone who gets one of these is now going to really learn what a temperature really feels like and how it pours. What, what we are used to, to thinking as 200 degrees may not be really what we think. So um, anyway, we're going to, uh, let's, let's bump the temperature up a little bit, okay? So we're gonna try to move that decimal point over, which will uh, allow us to change things a little bit faster, right? So now we're moving in, in tens. 255 up one 265 and so on 275 so we'll we'll hit it there and then hit set now it's set that this is going to stay at 285 degrees so as you can see it's climbing so right now we're at 132 i can still kind of touch my hand to it but it's it's cool to watch how fast it's heating up so having this digital pid controller um, is going to be fascinating because me personally just pouring on these pancake griddles for so many years not really knowing exactly what the temperature is you know I'm curious what what it really feels like what what really is full temperature for me you know full temperature for me usually means when the surface of the mold can boil water which uh, let's see water boils at what 212 degrees so this should far exceed that once it's done heating up but just kind of over the years just kind of tapping the surfaces of the molds as they get hot never really knowing what they are now i'll know just i don't know just i find it cool it is nice 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 out so so before we um get the molds up to full temperature and, and actually pour demonstrate with the plate um i did want to go over a few more details about the plate in terms of um, the types of plates that are going to be offered, um, pricing and things like that. So there's going to be two versions essentially offered. Uh, so the one, the one that you see in there, that's the, um, I guess the, the fancier one, the, the premium one. And then there's also going to be what we're calling the economy. Sorry, these birds are really loud out here. What we're going to be calling the economy version, which is going to be a stripped down version of that. You're basically going to get the heat blanket up under the um, aluminum plate with adjustable legs but that's it that entire bottom uh, box so to speak will not be there what you're going to have is you're still going to have a digital thermometer controller but it will be basically wired to it that will be separate from it okay so like you would just lay it down next to the hot plate on your table and then punch in your temperatures that will lower the build cost of it for sure now the heat blankets are very expensive so the one that i have is 12 by 18 that's the surface area of the, of my plate at least the top part that gets hot that one is 12 by 18. just that heat blanket alone is over 200 bucks so with that said um I don't, I don't have a figure yet for what the economy version is going to cost. What I can say is these are going to be sort of a made-to-order thing. If you're interested in one of these, you'll need to contact Kyle at Fishing All Out. You'll need to um, basically tell him which one you want. He is going to offer a 12 by 24 version, so a little bit larger surface area than the one that I have. And you could get that in the premium or economy. But, you know, these are going to take a little bit of time. It takes a while to get those heat blankets. I know he has a couple of them on order um, just sort of in advance of the launch of this product. But it's going to sort of be like the shooting star. You put in an order for one and when he can get the materials, he'll build it for you. Um, so the one that I have as it sits on my table is going to be $650. Um, I don't know exactly what the economy is going to be yet. We will get that information out. And, and again, just check the Fishing All Out website. Um, but yeah, I, golly, I'm super excited. So we're going to quit rambling and go pour some baits. All right, Fire Tiger, orange belly. So here's some dead on orange. And of course, this is dead on plastics, uh, black buckets, swim bait blend. Um, perfect for the Angling AI uh, five inch mold. So let's do maybe two drops of orange. The orange is pretty strong. And we want this bait to be very, very see-through with tons of illusion from light refraction. Okay. Yeah, it's looking good there. Maybe one more drop. 
of orange. Perfect. Then we're going to add a little bit of black flake just for some texture. It's just how I like to make this recipe. Alrighty. And of course, you know, this is custom bait making. If you want to try a fire tiger like the one I'm doing today, experiment with your flakes, right? So for the orange belly, put in some orange flake. For the uh, white pearl kind of midsection, maybe put in this black flake. For the gold vein, put in gold flake. For the green top, put in green flake, you know? You could, uh, you could easily mix and match your flake colors uh, to, to try and get a different effect. Find out what you like. Okay, the molds are at 224.2 degrees. <laughs> um, all right, so basically we're just pouring this orange belly. Um, I tried to get the camera to where you could kind of see what I'm doing, but just a little bit in the bottom of each one. And um, the hard part here is getting them even uh, throughout each mold. You know, we're just, this is just pure eyeballing it. Just a little bit of orange down there in the bottom. And you want to try to do the same amount of orange for all of the molds. So I'll stop there and kind of show you, show you what I've gotten so far. Okay, there it is. We have all of the orange uh, bottoms in. So looking pretty good there. And uh, now basically what we're going to do is heat up some more plastic and just do a very see-through white pearl, again, with a little bit of that black flake for texture. And then basically fill in the remainder of the belly portion. Then we're gonna do a vein, then we're gonna top them off. Really, really beautiful pattern. Uh, it's a simple pattern. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to choose it for today's video because it's a four layer laminate and temperature is so important to getting all of those layers to thermally bond and blend. Um, so I think it's a good exercise to demonstrate the hot plate with. So I actually bumped the temperature up. You can see that now it's set to 255 and uh, it just got up to 250. Because you know, one thing that I've never really thought about with the pancake griddles, because the temperature settings were so unreliable, you know, you would just turn it to 200 or turn it to 250 just based on experience. You didn't really know what the temperatures really were going to be. One thing I've never really thought about is how much temperature and heat is lost, right? So these molds are hot, but they're constantly expelling temperature. So the thermostat is saying that the heating blanket is heating at 250 degrees. However, the surface of the mold, and you know, and you can actually temp them with your uh, temp gun, I guess, but you know, the tops of the surfaces of the molds, you know, just a few minutes ago started boiling water. So, you know, you have that, that uh, natural loss of energy. Basically the point I was making is now that we are working with exact temperature settings, what the temperature is set on isn't necessarily going to be what the surface of the molds are, is what I was getting at. So this will kind of teach me to think of temperature in more exact terms. Okay, so now for this white pearl. Again, just a very, very see-through mixture with a little bit of that flake. And now we're basically just filling in the rest of that belly, which means we're gonna pour it just above the top of that hook slot insert. Just like that. Nice and slow. Slow and steady. Always wins the hand pouring race. That's looking good. So we'll do this one. Yeah. A nice, pretty, simple way to do a fire tiger. You know, you can of course get fancy with it with uh, skin pouring and doing vertical, vertical uh, barring patterns. But this is this is a nice, simple fire tiger pattern that to me is is really, really attractive. All right, so the vein color here is a mix of dead on chartreuse. There it is. So a couple drops of chartreuse there. That's maybe four drops and then a little bit of gold pearl powder. To me, uh, the gold pearl powder really just kind of makes the chartreuse pop a little bit. And uh, to me, I always like pouring veins in swim baits with a little bit of pearl powder. 
to me it just makes the vein look a little more blended I, I don't really know how to explain it but um, that's essentially how we're doing that is we're just blending that gold pearl powder with some chartreuse and then we'll put some of that black flake in there and that will be our vein color we might have a lot of landscaping noise happening uh, so if my audio gets real crowded I do apologize Okay guys, I'm gonna to try to pour one of these veins while the uh, lawn mower is not uh, closer to the house, if that makes any sense. Kind of going in circles out there somewhere. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try to get this up. Yeah, here he comes, coming back. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. That gold chartreuse in the vein, looking mighty, mighty, mighty good. Okay, again, sorry about the uh, background noise. So for the top color, I'm making what I like to call mean green. Okay, so a couple drops here of emerald green. Lure works emerald green. And then just whatever uh, watermelon you have on hand. So here's just some regular LW watermelon. So that was like three to two drops right there or something. And uh, it makes a really, really attractive, beautiful shade of green. That right there, plus a little bit of that black flake, is our top. Simple, simple, simple. All right, y'all, gonna try to top off one of these for you uh, before all the noise comes back. Oh, yeah, looking good. Man, it's nice having a true even mold to pour because the plastic isn't going to want to settle towards one side. You know, that unevenness makes, makes it overflow sometimes on one side, even if you fill it up properly. You know, if it all goes down to the tail, that means the head, the head is now a little shallow and your tail's over poured. This solves all of that. Oh yeah, that is too good to be true. You can see I already did the left side, but um, yeah, this is this is going great, y'all. First time driving this car, and uh, I'm in love. What an awesome thing! What an honor to be a part of of a project like this to bring <clears throat> this level of I guess equipment to the hand pouring world so um, thrilled to be a part of this project and uh, I think the serious hand pourer has to get excited over uh, improvements in the industry just like this okay there it is that is simply amazing um, I think the color turned out well and um, obviously you know even temperatures every mold the plastic is behaving the same you know when the temperatures are different you can tell from mold to mold when the when the plastic is behaving differently, when the viscosity is different. Um, no overspilling. Um, some of that is just, you know, practice, not overfilling, but a lot of it is the fact that they're perfectly even. Like I keep mentioning, the plastic's not running one way, it's sitting flat because the molds are truly sitting flat. So, absolutely amazing. I'll meet y'all back when they are done. Okay, first ever pour. With the new hot plate, we gotta do a drum roll. Drum roll, please. Okay. Woo, still a little warm. Yep. Gonna need the gloves, but I think these are ready to take out. So here we go, let's get one. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, look at that. Yes, there it is. Some Faya Taiga. Let's um, zoom in with the lens a little bit. Yeah, beautiful color. As you can see, everything's very much see-through. The whole thing is an illusion. And uh, that's because none of the colors are oversaturated. So, you know, you could, of course, make this really saturated. I just like the way it looks when it's very see-through. You can see how faint the vein is. 
Um, but in certain light, at certain angles, it really, really pops because of the pearl that we put in it. Very, very <clears throat> uh, good bond. No cold cracks. So um, I, I had the hot plate set at, actually, it will, it will go back to what it was set at. Just a second. Okay, so by the end of it, I had it set at 255. Um, so however that translates to the actual temperature of the surface of the molds and inside the molds, that setting was hot enough <clears throat> to get all of those layers to bond really well. There is no delamination going to happen, no cold cracks, everything is, is looking absolutely perfect. Okay, there we go. Absolute awesome pour, completely consistent all throughout. They are almost indistinguishable from each other and uh, all of them bonded perfectly. There's no little micro cold cracks or, or any evidence at all that, that some of them did not bond while others did. And again, that was one of the biggest things uh, that, that, well, that was probably the biggest reason why getting an even heating surface was so important. If we were even going to do this project, there were certain benchmarks we had to hit to even make it worthwhile. And that was an absolute pleasure. That just took my personal pouring to the next level. Wow, is all I can say. As someone who has dedicated so much time, energy, and passion to hand pouring and bait making in general, getting, getting to be a part of a project like this, show it to you guys for the very first time, and being able to use a piece of equipment that makes so many uh it simplifies so many of of some of the things that make hand pouring difficult i mean that was an absolute pleasure Th these are the kind of moments that i live for just to get to do something new and to try to take the level of pouring higher and higher and higher so a big thanks big thanks and shout out to kyle dunsmore at fishing all out for just having having this vision and allowing me to be a part of it to help bring it to life to consult on it also huge shout out of course to dead on plastics and angling ai molds the two title sponsors of this channel i could not do it without them i would have never been able to to bring my personal bait making and the content as far as it has come without the support and help of some of of some of the best companies in the in the industry and um, I'm forever, forever thankful for their support. Um, so anyway, y'all, our industry just got better. Oh man, I'm, it's, it's so exciting. It's so exciting to get to be a part of these things. And um, yeah, that was everything I wanted it to be. So hope y'all enjoyed the video. Shoot me lots of comments down below. If you are interested in a piece of equipment like this, uh, again, reach out to Fishing All Out on uh, Facebook, I believe is a good place to reach him. And uh, he can kind of talk you through how to get one of these. So bon voyage.